Hello friends, this video on reproduction in organisms part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Asexual reproduction where we'll talk about fission, budding, fragmentation and vegetative propagation. Sexual reproduction where we'll discuss about the pre-fertilization events fertilization and post-fertilization events. Now, reproduction in living organisms. What do we mean by a reproduction? To reproduce new organisms of its own kind, right? For example, if you look at a tiger, a tiger gives birth to another tiger. So, they give birth to the same species, correct? So now the question is, why do we need reproduction? Now, we just look at the variety of living organisms on the screen, starting from a tiger, elephant, human beings, to small organisms like bacteria and the insects, so many different stuffs, right? Even the plants, not to forget them. Now, we see all these organisms have been existing on this planet since years together. Now, every organism has got a definite lifespan, correct? So, nobody is uh, going to live forever. So, every organism, whether it is a cat, dog, human being or a microorganism, everybody has to die someday. Now, if the organisms are dying, then how come these the same organisms are existing for years together? So, that is where reproduction comes into picture. So, what happens is an organism is born and then the organism grows, it becomes old and then it dies. But before it dies, it reproduces, that it, is, it produces other organisms of its kind. And then those organisms live for again a couple of years and then they give birth to next generation and that is how it continues and that is why reproduction is necessary. So even though reproduction is not a process which is necessary for a living organism to live but it is necessary to sustain any species. So if let us suppose, let us suppose consider any animal for example, let us suppose uh, say dogs. If dogs do not reproduce, what will happen? Over a period of time, there will be no dogs left on earth. Right? So, in order to sustain the same uh, species, the organisms need to reproduce. So, in this lesson, we are going to talk about the process of reproduction, how it happens, where, why it happens, what are the different ways by which different organisms reproduce. So, we will talk about all the detail regarding reproduction. So, let us now define reproduction. It is the process by which living organisms produce new organisms similar to themselves. So if you see the name reproduction, so production means to produce, re means again. So to produce again, so what, do, what are they producing again? Organisms which are similar to themselves. So that is why an elephant will always be seen with a baby elephant. Similarly, human beings produce human babies. So you talk about any organism, they will produce their young ones similar to themselves. So you can always distinguish between the baby of a giraffe and the baby of a human being, right? They are so different from each other. Why? Because their parents belonged to different species altogether. Now the question is why is reproduction necessary? However, I have already briefed about it to some extent but let us still see in detail that even though reproduction is not necessary for a living organism to survive or to be alive but still a lot of energy is spent for this process of reproduction like you would have seen that all the life processes which takes place inside the body of a living organism. Let us consider human beings for instance. There are so many processes taking place inside our body. For example, the digestive system, respiratory system, excretory system, circulatory system and do you think that you do not need to spend anything for these processes to occur? Of course not. You need to spend a lot of energy. So a lot of energy is being spent inside the body for these processes. Similarly, a good amount of energy is also spent after the process of reproduction. 
Now, reproduction is not necessary for the organism to be alive, but still it is so very important that we are spending energy for it. So let us see what makes it so important. It retains a particular species of living organisms. As I said, that if a particular species stops reproducing, then after a certain time, that entire species will become extinct. So let us take example of human beings. Now, if no new babies are born, so if if there is no reproduction taking place in human beings, what will happen? All the existing human beings will die someday or some day or the other because right now, let us suppose, whichever number of human doesn't matter whether millions and millions of human beings are present on this earth, but all of them will have to die someday because the average lifespan of human beings are around 60 to 70 years, right? So some of us, some of our grandparents are maybe 70 to 80 years old. Some of the young kids are maybe one to two years old. Some of us are maybe 20, 30 years old. So that way is everybody is aged differently, but over a period of time, all of them would die. Now, since there are no more new babies born, so what will happen after that period of time, there will be no human beings at all. So human beings will become extinct. So that is one important thing why reproduction is necessary so that it can retain a species over years after years. Transmission of characters from one generation to the next. Now all of you would have observed that some of you resemble your father, some of you resemble your mom, some of you resemble your grandpa or grandmom. So there are similarities in characters, whether it is the features, the looks, or it is the behavior. So in some or the other way, you share some similarities with your parents or grandparents. So this inheritance of characters is also possible due to reproduction. Now had reproduction not been there, in that case there would have been no transmission of characters also. So this transmission of characters is also possible due to reproduction. Variations lead to the origin of new species. Okay, so when I say that kids are similar to their parents, that doesn't mean that kids have to be exactly similar to their parents. So here on the screen, you can see a picture where a couple with their two kids are being shown. So here if you see, this is the male and this is the female. So when they both undergo the process of reproduction, these kids are born. Now that doesn't mean that the kid has to be exactly similar to one of its parents. It is just that the kids will share some similarities with their parents, but there will be some traits which will be completely new, which will not be present in either of the parents. Let us take an example. Let us suppose this kid. This kid has got brown hair, which is similar to his mom. The other kid has got black hair, which is similar to his father. Correct? So if you see, this kid has got big black eyes, which is similar to the mom. This kid has got blue eyes. But if you see, unfortunately, none of it is nothing on uh, misfortune. It is just that this kid has got something different. These blue eyes are neither present in the father nor present in the mom. So if you see the mom has little brown eyes and the father has got black eyes. So the kid has got blue eyes. So blue eyes is a trait which is not present in either of the parents. So this type of new characters which is being seen in the offspring is called variations. So these these new traits of characters which are seen in the children is referred to as variations and this small small variations over a period of time can even give rise to new species. I will give you an example. It is suppose you would have seen that um, um, the dogs which you see not only on the streets but also as pets. So there are many varieties of dogs that you can see, right? Not all of them look similar. Some of them have a lot of fur, some of them have very less fur and there are so many varieties. If you see some of them have been shown in this picture. Do you think all of them look similar? No, right? If you compare this one which has got so much of fur all over its body with this one which is no fur at all so they look so different but they are all dogs so 
how is it different now these differences arise from small small variations so now in this example also when this guy will get married and this guy will give birth i mean this guy along with his wife when they will give birth to their children maybe some of them might have blue eyes so the blue eyes that time will not be a variation it will just be an inherited trait so these variations over a period of time can actually give rise to new varieties, can actually give rise to new species. Thus, variation is very, very important and variation exists due to the process of reproduction. Now, there might be many questions in your mind that how inheritance occurs or how variance, variation occurs. Now, we will take these topics later in one of our later lessons where we will talk about the inheritance and variations in more detail. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.